Hello, welcome to this channel. In last video, we talked about the basics about pins and ports set up in momentum. In this video, we will explore the definition of FEM ports within AlphaPro. Investigate what's the difference among various types of ports, learn how to set them up, and I will demonstrate their applications using a practical example. To specify a particular port type, simply hover your mouse over the desired port and right-click, choose Advanced Properties. A small pop-up window will appear, displaying six different fit types in the drop-down list. It's important to note that both Momentum and FEM simulation engines share the same port setup interface. However, the inner workings of FEM differ significantly from momentum. We have three primary types of ports, waveguide ports, edge sheet ports, and cylindrical ports. This image shows you the relationship between these three types of ports and the types displayed in the setup. So the sheet port is commonly used in any automotive by default, any pin on edge can generate it. For instance, a pin attached to the edge of a model, whether on the edge of a polygon or internally, will automatically create a rectangular sheet connecting the positive and negative pins. The auto type creates edge pins equivalent to those set up as direct at any edges, TML or TML0 inside the model, eliminating the need to specify port types. What does that mean? So basically, you only need to specify the pin's position and drag it under the port. Then the rest of steps won't be necessary if you want to use sheet ports. While we commonly encounter vertical sheet pores, it's worth noting the existence of horizontal sheet pores also play a significant role. Understanding the port configuration is key. Alpha Pro generates a port from the positive to the negative edge pins. If no negative pin is defined, Alpha Pro automatically finds the closest ground for you. And the width of the port is the edge of the edge pin. And if a negative pin is specified, Alpha Pro defines a port from these two pins. You can change the polarity of one pin to be negative. And this configuration proves particularly valuable when establishing differential ports for specific applications. Now let's shift our focus to differential ports within Alpha Pro, especially the SMD and the delta the gap types. These two types of ports are frequently utilized with momentum, especially in conjunction with vendor models like Mirada. Both SMD and the Delta Gap ports share a commonality. Each feature two edge pins across a gap or operate as a Delta Gap pin connected to an SMD device. The distinguishing factors are their calibration after the extension of the two edges of transmission lines until they touch one another. Delta gap is directly connected with an SMD model afterwards. But for SMD type of ports, it will de-embed out of the extension and thus the self-impedance of the transmission line will be removed out and the model also adds the mutual coupling of this added part to the nearby environment. Because of this calibration process, Delta gap is for an ideal model without de-embedding the extension. My SMD is ideally suited for models that already include self-inductance and capacitance to ground precity. Contrasting the approach in momentum when it uses a lambda source to a local point, so the source applied here is different from the calculated current in the same cell when an extended transmission line is applied. In FEM, it uses a potential representation. The extended transmission line has zero potential at a contact point 
you know, when the engine calculates the transmission line, it calculates the potential of this transmission line from one edge to the other. And this is exactly the same how to calculate for the direct type when it adds the edge sheet port. So FEM inherently addressing self and mutual impedance coupling effects. Unlike a momentum, when explicit D embedding is required for self and a mutual inductive coupling between component ports and feeds, FEM circuit exhibit um, automatic D embedding effect. Let's examine a test bench I build to verify this theory. Here in momentum, the auto and direct type ports deliver the same results. While SMD and the delta gap yield different outcomes. In FEM, the result from auto, direct, and SMD are the same, and the only variation comes from the delta gap model. Continuing our discussion on the setup of differential ports beyond the manual configuration using one port with two polarity pins or specialized port types like SMD or delta gap. Another effective method involves adjusting the phase by pulse excitation. Now, I would like to guide you through the process of how to display the field along set up the pulse excitation. First, navigate to the options and expand the frequency planes. Enable both near field and far field by setting their status to on. After running the simulation, click on the near field. Access the view filter by clicking the plus icon at the top right. Set the normal direction and hover the mouse over the edge where you've set up the pin. Pick a simple plane and click down to visualize the field along this plane. Now zoom in using the view control panel and locate the excitation type. From the drop down menu, you can choose between single port excitation as demonstrated earlier, or more advanced options like a multiple port or circuit port excitation. Let's click on multi port and then set excitation. Here you can select the two ports, both with an amplitude of 1, and set the phase difference to 180 degrees. Afterwards, check the field distribution to ensure the proper setup for the differential mode. So for the common mode, you will follow a similar procedure, adjusting both the amplitude and the phase to be the same. And this versatile approach allows you to effectively tailor the excitation of pores in your simulation, providing flexibility in representing both differential and common modes or even advanced circuit uh, excitation. Uh, we have gone through all conditions to form the edge pores and how to format the differential pores through various methods, as well as check the field distribution caused by the port excitation. Now let's talk about uh, cylinder pores. Cylinder pores are created when pins are specified as point pins or area ones. So here we can click the pin icon and choose the area pin with various shapes for momentum. But for FEM, any pin situated inside a metal without edge defined triggers the creation of cylindrical pools. So all these options are okay. And here I have two to make a comparison. One is with dot and the other is with square shape. We will be able to find that both of them create the same cylinder pools in Alpha Pro FEM. The process of generating cylinder pools is automatic and they exhibit better behavior regarding prosthetic pulse effects compared to edge pins inside of the metal. And in short, both the cylinder pulse and edge pulse only need the pin's definition and the no need to specify the pulse type. The other type by default is enough. They exhibit uniform potential along the edge or the cylinder. Now let's dive into the distinctive features of the waveguide port. 
These specialized ports are served as an entry point for energy into the solution space. Presuming that the structure is fed through a waveguide, the waveguide port enforces a waveguide mode field distribution at a port rather than the uniform field distribution by edge or cylinder ports. This makes it uh, particularly effective for microstrip line, strip lines, uh, coaxial cables, and more. To establish a waveguide port in offer pro, the process involves placing pins on the edge of your structure and uh, applying the feed type as TML. It is crucial to note that offer pro doesn't display the boundary before running. So um, we need to have a precise pin placement along the entire structure edge. And in this example, merely having TML inside the structure, even though it is an edge, does not constitute a waveguide port. So only when an edge pin is assigned to the edge of the entire structure and the port type set as TML, does it form a waveguide port.